Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I'm your host, Gary Maynard Chuck. So, food and wine, specifically cheese. Great pairings, you know, kind of like Romeo and Juliet, Gary Vaynerchuk and the Jets, peanut butter and jelly. Cheese and wine is the way to go, and it's really one of my favorite combos. I pretty much eat cheese for dinner often, once or twice a week if I can help it with some peppers or other things of that nature. I'm an enormous cheese fan, and today, finally, it's time, episode 98, to attack the cheese and wine pairing. So that's what we're doing today. So. What else before we get into our wonderful tasting? Um, let's congratulate the New Orleans Saints. Big win last night. Killed the Falcons. Big, big win. It's great to see the people down here there have something to cheer about considering what's gone on over the last 14 months. Hopefully this is the beginning of the resurgence of one of the great cities in the world. What a great food and wine town it has been for years and years, and I can't wait for it to get back to its uh, level, and hopefully maybe that's what we'll do, the Wine Library TV uh, party. Um, other than that, Fred Savage, ugh, come on. I was thinking at least Freddie Prince Jr. or George Clooney, something like that. Maybe I'll play myself in the Wine Library TV movie, but the Fred Savage thing was pretty funny, good work. All right, other than that, not too much on the agenda other than great wines, great cheese, and I'm real, real excited about it. Wine number one is the Wegler 2004 Riesling, 9% from the Moselle, 9% um, alcohol, so it's a light little wine. Um, Let's see what it's doing. Um, really interesting wine. Fifteen dollars, ninety points. Wine Spectator. Really vibrant, spritzy nose. Really, really coming alive on the nose. Really nice hint of pineapple. You know, really easy drinking. There's some sugar here. Mary S. is a great wine to try and start instead of the Behringer White Zinn. There's definitely a good amount of residual sugar here. It's a nice wine, very easy drinking. I like it. And let's see what we're going to pair it with. We're going to pair it with the Szechuan Gruyere, Grand Cru Gruyere, from a small farm in Wisconsin. And let's see what this guy's doing. Unpasteurized raw cow's milk on this Gruyere. Szechuan. Mm. Real complex richness. Really great, great Burgundian style flavors. Little rock. I'm getting a little bit of ash. Getting a, a lot of like ash flavors on as well. Now back to the wine. This is going to be one of my favorite episodes of all time. Okay. Here's what's happening. With this wonderful matchup with the Gruyere. It's bringing a little bit of body to the Wegler, whereas before it came off very crisp and clean. Because of the enormous amount of flavor that the Gruyere is uh, bringing to the table, it's bringing weight to your palate. And when you go back to the Wegler, the sugar mixed with the you know ashy and dry and complex Burgundian type flavors of the Gruyere really complement each other really nice. They're really going well together. Let me just try it again. It's so good. This is going to be an eye-opening episode. This is awesome. Um, it's already going better than I thought. Cheese and foods, like atmosphere and mindset, can really change the way a wine tastes. And this Gruyere, going with this Riesling, and Gruyere goes great with Rieslings, Proseccos, Gewürztraminers, you know, wines of, of those nature, those crisp wines, because they complement each other. The weight and complexity of the Gruyere go really great with the simplicity of the wine, giving you an amazing Epicurean experience in your mouth. You know, but it's really, really great. This is a great combination. Let's give the wine an 89. Let's give the uh, Szechuan Gruyere a 92. And let's give the combo 90 points. Really cool. I'm going to clean out my palate. A lot of flavors today. H2O. Let's give it a 83. You know, not into water. All right, let's move on. The next wine, Kennedy Point 2005 Sauvignon Blanc from the Marlboro. Really, really cool producer. I'm a big fan of their wines. I just started getting this wine. Uh, I've been, where did I first try this? I think I had this first 
on vacation somewhere, I can't remember, it was not available in Jersey, I seeked it out, worked real hard to get it, and now we have it, it's a great producer, I hope the 05 shows well, because I have the 04, um, let's see what happens with this, now, yeah, I mean, this is where I'm going to make a statement that's going to really get controversial, this wine, I think, you know, on the nose again, I've got to taste, hold on, I'm going to hold it, I'm going to hold it, real grassy, real, you know, you know, green berry, kind of like, um, kind of like, you know, Chardonnay grapes that have just started budding, you know, just really, real grassy, grapefruity. Classic, classic cat piss, you know, um, <laughs> I know, but it's that classic flavor profile. And, and the silkiness, and the complexity, and the Pouli Fumé style Sauvignon Blanc from the Loire Valley really has the weight, not just the crispness and the cleanness, but has the weight to stand up to big meals, and that's why this wine is a 91 to 92 point Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand, no doubt. Nice. And we are going to pair this with the Monte Anebro from Spain, Nice little white cheese here. Let's try it. This is a goat cheese. Jesus. The Montenegro. And the Enebro is one of... Uh, <laughs> classic goat cheese. I mean, tons of flavors. Wow. Coats my palate. It's got that classic sharpness that you love in a goat cheese. Not too over the top. I'm getting, a, you know, a very elegant, clean, creaminess, almost like a cream cheese aspect to it. Just really delightful. Wow, really nice. combination is not working quite as well as the first one. You know, they're, they're both kind of competing because the Sauvignon Blanc is so big and so complex. I think they're both competing for flavor profile, but the, there's definitely some nice integration. Let's try the one. You know what? Just try this one more time. I just want to see what the cheese does to the wine. One more time. I'm just sneaking cheese flavors in. I love them. The only thing it really does is the, the uh, Anebro is able to cut through some of the acidity that the Kennedy Point is bringing to the table, but it's not killing me as a combo. I think they're both kind of standing on their own. They're not, they're integrating just a little bit, just on the acidity, on the acidity level. Other than that, not that much. I'm going to score the Kennedy Point 92 points. I'm going to score the Monte Anebro 87 points, and as a combo, I'm going to score it. 88 points, 87 points. It's just a standard little combo. Nothing too crazy. Let's move on. And we're moving on. Now, to a red wine. The Razon 2014 Do, just outside of Rioja, 70-year-old Grenache Vines, nine dollars. And hello, color. I mean, big, big color. Really should be interesting. Yeah, big nose feel. A lot of cherry, little, little kirsch on the nose. Little um, dark chocolate even on the nose. Wild and gamey in a way, almost like a venison meets cherry flavor. Hit a deer on the road. 
let it fall down, throw a bunch of cherries on it, take out your knife that you always have on you, cut the beer, bite it, that's the flavor pro profile. It's definitely got a venison, gamey, earthy tone to it. But a sweet cherry on the finish, dry, sour cherry on the finish. I like this one a lot. It's extremely elegant, and what I'm going to match it up with is the Zamorano from uh, Spain, sheep's milk. Mm. Zamorano is a very focused cheese. Again, also pretty earthy, classic creaminess on the mid palate of the cheese. That transition flavor you're getting. I like this a lot. A lot of people love Zamorano. It's very popular. Um, you know, it's got a little sharpness to it, but not really. It's a very subtle little sharpness to it. It's a very nice cheese. <laughs> Let's see what it does to the raison. Wow, this totally changes the game. The Razon puts on an enormous amount of flavor. Wow. Actually, I don't know if I can ever drink the Razon again. I'm going to score the Razon 90 points. I'm a big fan of this little $8, $9 uh, wine from Spain. I'm highly recommending it because it's very serious, very complex, and brings a lot of flavor profiles that you don't get in a $9 wine. It's not just this grape fruit juice that a lot of $9 Spanish wines have become. With the Zamorano, which I'm going to score 88 points. Very good cheese. I liked it. Not as much as the uh, Gruyere, but but the combo itself, 92 points. This is exactly what you want to happen. The cheese brought an enormous weight to the wine. A lot of complexity. They integrated beautifully. You know, just delightful. I mean, what a, what a great combo. And really, talk about value. Eight dollars. The uh, Zamorano is not an expensive cheese. You grab a pound of that, you buy a couple bottles of this at $8. I'm talking about an amazing evening for under 20 bucks. So, home run. Let's move on. We're going to finish with a sparkling wine. That's right. From Tasmania, Australia. That's right, like the devil. This is the Jans. Non-vintage sparkling wine. And, uh, you know, made in the champagne style. Let's see what this does. It's kind of funny to do that. Now the Jans is 51% Chardonnay, 46% Pinot Noir, and 3% uh, Pinot Meunier. Um, it's a 16 or $17 bottle of sparkling wine. A great alternative in the past. Uh, a lot of people here are raving about it. This is my first attempt at this wine. You know, nice little sparkling, $17, crisp, clean flavors, kind of lemony, apple peel. Not too bad at all. Um, just, uh, you know, solid, solid. Uh, I'm going to go uh, 88 points on it. Um, I like it. You know, I like it. I don't love it. I think it falls a little flabby, finishes a little soft, but what are you going to do? Now, the cheese it's matching up with is one of my favorites of all time. This is a three mix of goat, cow, and sheep. It's called Latour. It's a, just an unbelievable little cheese. It's flown in and sold immediately. We get it on Wednesdays and Fridays, and I'm taking a big chunk because it's one of my favorite cheeses. It's like candy. I love it. Wow, creaminess, you know, just a double cream, just great, great stuff. Here's where the cheese gets the credit. We're going to give the wine 88 points. We're going to give the cheese 94 points for its creaminess and complexity. Just tons of flavors all over. Very cream, you know, get a little cream cheese aspect to it. You know, it's that, that creaminess. It's just wonderful, wonderful. And, uh, and the combo gets a 90-point combo. Really, really fun stuff. All right.
comments. John W. Weepert, hopefully I didn't butcher that, says, Gary, my question is, is Napa, California killing the wine market? Due to the glut overpriced wine coming out of California, I want to know what you think. Are California wines overpriced, and do you think they are going to kill the wine market? John W. They are not going to kill the wine market. Brands like Yellowtail and all these five, six dollar wines and all these marketing wines have more of a chance to kill the wine market, which they won't do either, than the California wines. I don't believe California wines are overpriced. And more importantly, we don't talk like that in Wine Library TV. Certain wines from California may be overpriced, but there's tons of value from California still to come as well. I mean, there's overpriced wines in Australia and Spain and everywhere, and there's undervalued wines all over the world. So. You know what, I think it's a little more hype, it's a little bit more what people are buzzing about right now, but I think it's overblown, I don't think it will kill the wine market, I don't think anything will, um, and, uh, and, um, and that's what I feel about it. Tim F. says, Gary, who sells wine at a garage sale? I've never seen that in my life. Tim, obviously you are not the garage sale fan that I am. I try to garage sale as much as humanly possible. Where do you think I find all these wacky props for Wine Library TV? Finally. Jeff Cass says, Gary, great show. Just turned on to Wine Library TV this weekend by Chris Staniski, who made the spreadsheet, right? It's great. So, Jeff, thanks for commenting. Chris, great work. Which leads me to the thing that we need to do for the day, which is first person to get five people in the comment section to say that this person sent them to the comment section saying, hello, Gary, I'm a first-time viewer, gets two free t-shirts, that's right, and a free shipping code. Let's see who can win. And question of the day. Question of the day, what is your favorite wine and food pairing? We'll see you next time on WLTV.